So in the last video, we talked about timers. Um, now let's talk about counters. Um, I will say off the bat that counters in CCW work very differently than it does in, in Compact Logic. I, I kind of, up to this point, I haven't really noticed much of a difference, but here I've noticed some differences of things that I've liked, to do, I've liked doing with counters that makes it a little bit more challenging. Primarily um, uh, going above range, um, that makes it a little bit more challenging, but we'll, we'll cross those bridges when we get to it. So um, may just mean you got to be a little creative. Again, everything is found is under timers and counters. If you can't find it, hit this little arrow over here and the drop down, this drop down menu will show up to show you where everything is. And you just got to find timers and counters. And here's our timers from last you know week. Um, the uh, RTO, retentive off delay, on delay, we're not going to cover these two. This is the only one that's worth its while, in my opinion. Um, but so this is high speed. But we're going to start with these two. First, I'm going to start with CTU. If you're a fan of the show 24, you automatically think of counter terrorist unit. But actually, it just means count up timer. Um, and here we will need to have a, a bit that will trigger the count up. OK, so anytime that goes through, goes true, it counts up one. And we can put that in and I'll put it in the current value. Now, if we wanted to, we can just put a, a a bit over here, which I probably will do, to say when the counter is done, turn on this light. So I'm going to go over here and let's do red light. And when when this reaches 5, it will be five, good. I'm also going to put in PB2 here, because that way when you toggle the bit to go true, it will reset it. If you want it to reset when it goes false, that's going to require some different uh, some different logic, which we're, we'll go, we we in memory bits probably, which we'll worry about another time. Um, but notice, I can also do this. No, I could go in and on my counter done or my qubit, not done bit. When it's not done, I could turn a light on. Okay, so every time this goes true, and download, and after this time, I'm probably going to pause the video every time I download because to help make the video go faster, just FYI. So download with project values. Got to make sure your simulator is on and powered on before you do this. Hit yes to make it go run. And as you can see, I got a light on already. And we'll monitor it. So right now, because it's not uh, done, for lack of a better word, the queue is on. Uh, the queue is off, so the light's on. So if I keep pushing this button, you'll notice that that goes up by one. Notice, though, while this rung is true, it's not keeping a count. It's basically press it once, count it once, release, press again, counts again. So it depend, This um, if you think, why, why don't we just use a command that says add? Well, this is why. There's an embedded uh, ability to press once let go and then it's not going to keep adding every time it goes through i will point out though if i put in the reset notice the reset is dominant so it so no matter how many times i push this button it's not going to count up because the reset is constantly counting that to the true okay so now notice i'm hitting this button and now when it hits five the red light turns out but notice it doesn't go past five that, that is one of the things I like about compact logic versus this, is I can keep counting things up. This will create a little more um, fun and, and other things. So, All right, so that's how you do a count up. Take a guess on what a countdown does. I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to put in a countdown. 
their down counter. Again, the only big difference is there's something called a load, and there's still a, a preset value. Where a count up, you start at zero and count up to a number. With a count down, you load a number, and then you count down to zero. And the, the qubit turns on when it hits zero. So uh, the red light's still there, and I'm just going to change this to CTD1. Okay? So building and download. So it's downloaded. Hit yes to put in run mode. And now you can see that the cube is on because it's at zero. For me to turn that off, I need to do the load button. And now, now you notice the Q turns off, that turns that light on, and now I'm at 10. And now I can just do this countdown. And it's not the final countdown. And notice if I load it, that is dominant over the counting up and counting down. Okay, so if you don't see your numbers changing, it's probably because you got a reset uh, tr that's true or a load that's true. And then once I count this down, It turns on. Now, if I was in Compact Logic, that would be all we would talk about a count up and count down. And if I wanted something to count up and count down, I would put a count up command and a count down command with the same tag address. Um, I like that. This, though, is a little bit, you need a, a specific count down and a count up tag that gets generated. But if you want something that can be controlled by a couple different things that has its own command called a count up count down um, a, a CTUD so I'll show you how that works I'm gonna delete that and let's just go CUTD and I'm gonna throw in another rung here because I'm gonna move this down to there because notice now I have two different cues I have a queue up so that one will go that that queue will turn on when it when the um, when it hits the preset, when the current value hits the preset value, there's a QD which goes true when it's at zero, and then you have your reset which will take things back to zero, and you have your load that will take things back to your preset value. Confused? Yeah. So PB2, PB3, PB4. And let's do a preset value of 10. Now, right now, um, I have a, let's change this to a CTD, CUTD. And instead of one, let me make this the, the QU. Okay. And I'm going to add another bit in here because this will maybe help you figure, you know, another bit. Let's do the QD. And by the way, you know, QD. And now let's put a bit here. And I'm going to put one more rung in here just to show you. So let me put a turn on above above 10. Turn on at zero. And this will turn on between 0 and 10, for instance. And I will put in another bit here for a light. So 
So we got three lights. So this rung will turn on at zero, this rung will turn on above 10, and, and this one will be between zero and 10, okay? So let's, um, let's download this. So it's downloaded, I hit yes to run. And now you can see while I'm at zero, the green light is the green light is on. If I toggle my load, so that's uh, three. Notice the green light turns on and uh, the QD turns off and the QU turns off. Okay, so if I turn that off, now I have a if I hit plus, it doesn't go above. But if I hit minus, looks what it does. It goes minus, and look what happens to that yellow light because I have the two cues off. So it's a good way. This is a little programming trick, so if you want to have something between two ranges that you can keep in the mind, and I can keep minusing things. Oh, I'm added up. Minus, sorry, wrong button. And now if I keep going down, there it is. And I can load it, I can unload it, or I can reset it, and, it was just, and I can load it, 10, unload, and if they're both on, the reset wins. Okay, so that's counters. Where it gets fun is you might need to do multiple counters in order to get things. Um, one of the things I don't like about this is if I try to do two counters at the same time with the same conditions, I have to get a little more fancier with my commands. Um, so you might need to utilize memory bits, but we can figure it out and go from there. All right. Have a good day.